Hello, Restoration. It's Brian. And yes, I am in front of a fireplace. You know, it's snowing outside, it's kind of cold, and uh, some would say even miserable. But uh, this type of year, and even though it's only the beginning of November, almost the middle of November now, um, it reminds us of the holidays, doesn't it? I mean, Thanksgiving is coming up, but we've pretty much skipped Thanksgiving at this point with the amount of snow that we have and, and have pretty much gone right to Christmas. And when I think of a fireplace and, and, uh, and snow and the holidays, I think about uh, my uncle falling asleep on the couch and at a, at a family Christmas. Um, and not really sure why he's sleeping, but you know, we're just gonna leave him there. Um, you know, really fond memories and stuff like that. Um, so I wanted to do this in front of the fireplace because this week we're talking about community with each other and not just family, not just during the holidays, but community with each other as in the body of Christ. It's something that is very explicitly laid out in scripture and we're going to take a look at some of these things and some examples that God has given to us. Uh, but you know, I think about um, the holidays and and that's a time when a lot of people get together that's when we really start to believe in this community thing that if we band together we can do more you know you think about like the people that, that ring the bell for Salvation Army uh, outside of like Walmarts and Targets and all the, all those stores and uh, people bashing each other with with toys that they're trying to get uh, on Black Friday and you know this real good sense of community um, people yelling at each other in parking spaces uh, because somebody stole a parking space or took somebody's spot in line or took the last toy you know kinda like Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger that's what that reminds me of I don't know if you saw that movie but you should it's a great Christmas movie uh, anyway community is really cool and Jesus tells us to be in community with one another maybe not quite like I just described around Christmas time when we're all trying to get presents, but he is pretty specific with how we should do community together. And that's one of the, um, one of the uh, words on the mission statement for Restoration Church. So we've got the vision, which is people following Jesus. We are all about people following Jesus because it's all about him. And then we, our mission statement, which helps carry out the vision is transparency, community, and change. So it's transparency with Jesus and with each other. We've covered those things. It's, it's community with Jesus, which is what we covered last week, and then it's community with each other. And that's what we're on this week. So we've been at this series for five weeks. We're introducing Restoration Church to whoever wants to, to hear about it. And uh, this week we're talking about community with each other. It's so important, and there's so many stories in Scripture uh, that, that we can take from. And, and I don't know if you're like me, but when things tend to be going poorly for me in my life, if, if I'm having a, a struggle with something, I tend to withdraw. I, trend, I, I tend to isolate myself. And I think a lot of people will do that. They don't believe that anyone knows what they're going through. I don't believe that anyone has the same issues that I do. And, and so I can't tell anyone. And if I'm really struggling with my faith, I'd really better not tell anyone because I don't want anyone to think that I'm weak. And I doubt that anybody else struggles with their faith in a way that I do. So I keep my mouth shut, which is exactly what Satan wants. He wants us to be isolated because it's so much easier to get picked off when we're isolated, when we withdraw from everything else and we, we get away from the community that's been built around us. We stop reaching out to the friends around us that have invested so much into our lives. And that is a tactic of Satan uh, and not something that God would like us to do. Now, there are times in Scripture where Jesus withdrew to pray, to be alone, but those were times to rest, not because he was going through a rough time, but because he was um, getting connected again with Jesus, or with his Father. Jesus was connecting with himself because he was God, but he was also connecting with his Father. Um, see how I covered that one a little bit? Uh, anyway, so there's there's a bunch of stories in Scripture, and I want to share a couple of them with you. One's from the Old Testament, and then I got a couple from the New Testament. So in the Old Testament, there was this guy named David. You might have heard of him before. Uh, he did some stuff wrong. He had an affair. He killed the affair person's uh, husband, and um, and you know did did a bunch of that kind of stuff. But he was also a man of God. He also was described as a man after God's own heart. Right, so we can look at all the negative stuff that David did, but there was a lot of really great stuff that he did. And if you read any of the Psalms, you can see that. 
because uh, he wrote most of the Psalms. And in David's life, he was in constant, it seemed, constant turmoil. You see, uh, the king before David was a guy named Saul, and he didn't want David to take over the throne, and so he hated David. And um, Saul's son, Jonathan, warned David that Saul was going to try to kill him. See, David and Jonathan had like a bromance going, like, like, like the, the best bromance ever, more than Rocky and Apollo Creed, which is insane because that was probably the greatest bromance ever. Or think of your, your best friend. Like that's, It's that type of a relationship. And, and so Jonathan, who is the son of Saul, the guy trying to kill David, and David have this beautiful bromance, best friend relationship. And Jonathan goes to David and says, you've got to run. And so David flees. And then he gets into this land uh, where he is trying to stay. Um, and I don't even know how to say the city, but the city is is Kyla. We're going to say Kyla, uh, where David is at. And um, Saul finds out that that's where David is. And so David is in a, between a rock and a hard place, and he's asking the Lord if, if the people of Kyla are going to give up David into the arms of Saul. And, David's, and God says, yeah, that's exactly what they're going to have to do or that's exactly what they are going to be doing, so you need to run again. And so David um, is, is, is thinking about all these things, and um, we pick it up in 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 16. This is when one, Saul started to pursue David. Verse 16, And Jonathan, Saul's son, rose and went to David at Horish, and strengthened his hand in God, and he said to him, Do not fear, For the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Saul, my father, also knows this. And the two of them made a covenant before the Lord. David remained at Horish, and Jonathan went home. So Jonathan went. David's in this really tough spot, right? He's he's getting pursued, and people are betraying him. And uh, Jonathan realizes this, and he goes up, and he supports his bro David. So who do you need to be Jonathan to today? Who do you need to go support and be like, oh man, I haven't seen them in a while. I got to go check in on them. Something's going on. I need to encourage this person. See, God orchestrates this fellowship with the believers so that we can encourage one another. So we can bring each other forward. So we can carry each other's burdens, as it says in Galatians 6, 2, that we're supposed to carry each other's burdens. So that's exactly what Jonathan, we have this really cool example. And if you want to read more about it, I encourage you to do that. Uh, read through the, the Samuels. There's uh, this, this relationship between Jonathan and David that's so cool. Uh, it's like a, a buddy cop film if there was one that was faced in those times and really cool. So we have this really cool um, <laughs> this really cool relationship between David and Jonathan. And Jonathan is such an encourager to David in his time in, in, in need. And God sends Jonathan to David to be like, hey, I know you're scared and I know you don't know what's going on, but here's what's going to happen. And Jonathan goes and encourages David and tells him exactly what he needs to hear. So I believe that there is something in there for us that you and I can, can start to look at. And I know it's hard to do just on, um, on a video, but as, as you're going wherever it is right now, if you're on the road somewhere and um, you're just listening to this or you're, you're watching it at home or you're doing the dishes or whatever life is, is having for you right now, think about and write down a name that you could be Jonathan to. It's so cool. And and that's the beginning of how the church is supposed to work. It's not supposed to just be about programs and and how many things we can do in a certain week um, and how busy we can stay. I believe last week we talked a little bit about remaining in Jesus. And part of that is by celebrating with each other when things are going on, when we have um, life things happening to us, good or bad, that we celebrate it with others, with, with that community around us. That's why it's so important uh, to be involved in a small group if you have a small group to be involved in. That's why it's so important to surround yourself with people uh, who believe the same way. There's something where we can get together uh, where, where we all share a common 
interest or we all share a common goal and for believers no matter what type of background you come from we all share Jesus together and we all have this uh, this likeness in Christ that we're all trying to pursue him so we can set aside differences and live in this community and be together and be for one another and this is individual to individual. This is group to group. This is small group to small group. This is men's ministry to different men's ministry. This is church to church. This is church across the street to church across the street. That we're supposed to live in this community together, building one another up, edifying the body, so as to encourage one another. It's, it's written all throughout Scripture, especially in the New Testament, that we're supposed to be building the body up. Let no deceitful talk be coming out of your mouth, is where it says in Scripture. Don't, don't tear each other down. But what is good for building the body up? That's what God wants for us, and that's what He wants for this community. And I think as churches, sometimes we get so wrapped up in, in the, the job that needs to get done that we've got so many different serving opportunities that we forget that it's about the relationship. And so at Restoration Church, we want to make sure that we are all about the relationship. And that's why when we start a service together, it's not going to have a whole bunch of ushers and door greeters and whatever else that looks like we are the door greeters if you're going to be at restoration church if that's going to be something that you want to be a part of we invite you to be a door greeter without signing up to say hi to somebody new that way it frees us up to really look after the least of these and to connect with each other in community it's it's i'm, I'm really excited about what that looks like and then in another portion of portion, in another portion of scripture, uh, we've got in, in Acts chapter two. So this is when the church is just starting out. It's in Acts chapter two, starting in verse forty-two. It's a really, really familiar passage, and I just want to read it to you. It's so encouraging for me as we start Restoration Church that I want to make sure that this is what we are about. And it says, like I said, Acts chapter two, verse forty-two. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's beautiful. They devoted themselves to the fellowship, or to the apostles, I'm sorry, teaching. Let me start that over. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So that's what we're doing right now. And the fellowship to breaking of bread and the prayers. That's what the church needs to be about. We need to make sure we stay true to teaching and that we're breaking bread together and that we're praying together. And listen to this. Verse 43, And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done throughout the apostles. And all who believed were together. Flip the page. And had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved because of all the brilliant lights and awesome sound system and beautiful buildings that they had, had, had projected and built to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, I added that last part in there just to see if you were paying attention. Listen, they all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles because of this community together. They got back down to the basics that like we're going to preach Jesus and we're going to be all about Jesus and we're going to give to those in need and we're going to hang out together and we're going to share meals together and we're going to pray together, which means that we're going to confess sin to one another and really dive deep into each other's lives and we're not going to hold anything back. That's how community with each other needs to look. That's what this whole thing needs to look like. It's about the relationship. It's not about how much money is raised. It's not about how much 
uh, how, how many buildings we have. It's not about how many people even show up to a thing. It's about how are we investing in the relationships around us and how are we leading people to Jesus? How are we showing transparency? How are we in community? How are we changing lives through Jesus to us and to the world? That's what this is all about. It's community with one another. And when we have community with one another, when we are breaking bread together, that means sharing a meal, when we're praying together, you know who's glorified? Not us, because we point to Jesus. People on the outside will look and be like, man, I want that. That's so cool. How are they, how are they so close knit together? I don't understand what's so different about this group of people, but there's something that I want. And right now in the church, I'm afraid that not many people want what we want because all they see is bickering and all they see is us standing for a political candidate or trying to get our own way. And they don't see people agreeing with one another and sharing burdens with one another. How can we expect to bring people to Jesus if we are so focused on what we personally want and are so selfish I think I think the church needs to get back to people. I think the church would be wise to abandon some things for the sake of relationships. And you can argue all you want that, well, all these programs and everything is what's bringing all the people in. And you're right. That is one way to get people in. But the Bible says to preach the word. And the Bible says, lest the cross be void of its power. Meaning, let's let the cross do the work. Let's focus on the things we can do, like community with one another. Find people. Who's your Jonathan? Who's your David? Who do you need to encourage? That's what this whole thing needs to be about. So I don't know. Discuss this with somebody. See what what they think. I pray that you have relationships in your life. And if you don't, I pray that you would seek them out. And if you don't even know where to start, please send us a message. Please do that. We can help you. Get connected. I know it's scary. It's scary to walk out uh, and find people to, to, to connect with. It's scary to be vulnerable with people, to be transparent with people. See what it unlocks. And please contact us if you have any questions about any of this kind of stuff. We would love to hear from you. And a couple of quick updates here um, on Restoration Church. Uh, we've got really great news. We, uh, we have our, our giving platform is up and running. Uh, we've got a link connected right here um, on this page. We, we have it in the description if you want to um, click on that and donate to Restoration Church. Uh, there's two different categories that you can donate to. You can donate to the uh, community page uh, or the community account, which is, um, that means all of that money will go into the community account and which is a separate account from our overhead account and in that community account every dollar goes right back into the community it's it's really cool um we're really excited about that and if you don't earmark how you give or when we get weekend services started like all of that money goes directly into the community account and uh we distribute that around various organizations which we're going to be announcing here in the next couple of weeks so be on the lookout for the partners that we're going to be having uh, with our community account. 
Um, and then the other account is the overhead account. That's where all of the costs for Restoration Church um, are going to come out of. If we're going to have to pay rent, um, salaries, uh, if, if there's insurance things, I should have a business person explain all of this to you and not me. But that is the overhead account, and you're more than welcome to give to that one too. Um, it costs money to run the ministry, and so if you want to donate to that as well, feel free. Uh, but there is no pressure to give at all. We would love it if you did, but if you don't, we would still love you just the same. We, the, we care about you as a person and as an individual. We do not care about your pocketbook. We care about you. So we want you to get connected with people, and we want to be able to help you do that. So let us know how we can. Uh, man, I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am, and I hope you're staying up to date with all the cool stuff that we've got going on. We will see you next week.